let's explore the anatomical organization of the body. The body is made up of anatomical levels that increase in their complexity from the smallest, most fundamental units of our being all the way up to the entire organism as a whole. In order to understand our anatomical makeup, we must first understand what we are made of and how we are put together. The major levels of organization in the body from the simplest to the most complex are atoms, molecules, cells, tissues, organs, organ systems, and the human organism. So what are we really made of? Let's zoom in. We begin at the atomic level of organization. At this level, the human body is composed of atoms. Atoms are made up of three subatomic particles, positively charged protons, negatively charged electrons, and neutrons, which have no charge. More than 96% of the mass of the human body is made up of only four elements, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Oxygen is the most abundant element contained in the human body, making up about 65% of its mass. Carbon atoms can form up to four strong covalent bonds, making up the backbone of most organic molecules. Carbon is the basis for all life on Earth. Hydrogen is the simplest element. Its atom contains only a single proton and a single neutron. As a result of this simplicity, hydrogen readily bonds with other elements making it an important component for the formation of living organisms. Nitrogen atoms are important components of many proteins and of DNA. At the molecular level of our anatomical organization, atoms come together forming molecules. A molecule is composed of two or more atoms bound together. Smaller molecules can combine with one another to form the large macromolecules needed for life to exist on our planet. These are proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, and carbohydrates. Proteins are formed by assembling many units of amino acids together. Proteins provide the majority of the functions of the cell. The body uses protein to build and repair tissues, and to make enzymes, hormones, and other molecules the body needs. Another important macromolecule needed for life is nucleic acids. Nucleic acids make up RNA and DNA. These molecules specialize in the storage and expression of genetic information. Lipids are another important macromolecule. Lipids perform three primary biological functions within the human body. They serve as structural components of cell membranes, energy storehouses, and important signaling molecules. Carbohydrates are sugars, including monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are used for storing energy, for cellular messaging, and for supporting the cells and tissues. It takes trillions of atoms and molecules to make one single cell. This brings us to the cellular level of our anatomical organization. The human body consists of around 100 trillion cells. It is at the cellular level where life begins. The cell is the fundamental unit of all life on Earth. All living things are composed of at least one living cell. The cell is the smallest independently functioning unit of a living organism. The human body has more than 200 distinct cell types. Cells of similar types or common embryonic origin come together to form tissues. This brings us to the tissue level of anatomical organization. There are four types of tissues found in the human body. Epithelial tissues, 
connective tissues, muscle tissues, and nervous tissues. Epithelial cells come together to form epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues form the body's barriers. Connective tissue includes bone, cartilage, blood, and supportive tissues referred to as connective tissue proper. Muscle cells come together to form muscle tissue. There are three types of muscle tissues, smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle tissue. Smooth muscle allows substances to move through the body without conscious control, such as food moving through the digestive tract. Cardiac muscle allows the contractions of the heart muscle. Skeletal muscle attaches to bones, allowing for conscious movement. Nerve cells or neurons come together forming the major cell type of nervous tissue. Nervous tissue allows for integration and communication. Different tissue types come together to form organs. This brings us to the organ level of our anatomical organization. Organs provide specific functions in the body. For example, the brain is the control center of the body. It receives sensory input, integrates information, and sends motor commands. The heart is an organ that functions to pump the blood through the blood vessels. The kidneys are organs that filter the blood and make urine. The lungs function to inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. The stomach is an important organ for digestion. Organs work together in the body in a cooperative fashion as organ systems. This brings us to the organ systems level of our anatomical organization. The human body has 12 organ systems, each of which contains several specific organs working together to perform specific functions in the body. These include the digestive system, the integumentary system, the nervous system, the cardiovascular system, the respiratory system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the immune system, the lymphatic system, the endocrine system, the reproductive system, and the urinary system. The digestive system functions to absorb nutrients from the foods we eat and to eliminate indigestible waste. Ingested food must be broken down and processed to make nutrients available for the tissues. The portion that is not digested is eliminated from the body in the form of feces. The integumentary system includes the skin, hair, nails, and exocrine glands. The integumentary system forms the external body covering and protects deeper tissues from injury. It houses important touch, pain, and temperature receptors, along with sweat glands and oil glands. The nervous system allows for fast, specific communication between the body and the brain. Both conscious and unconscious sensory information is gathered about the state of our external and internal environments. This information is gathered by sensory receptor cells and sent to the central nervous system for processing. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. The central nervous system integrates and processes this information and then forms a response. These motor commands then travel from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system. Motor neurons will innervate muscles and glands that will then carry out the motor commands from the central nervous system. The cardiovascular system functions to circulate blood around the body through the blood vessels. The heart is the organ of the cardiovascular system that creates the pressure needed to pump the blood through the blood vessels. Red blood cells circulate throughout the body, delivering oxygen to the cells and tissues, while picking up carbon dioxide. 
When these red blood cells pass by the lungs, they release carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. The respiratory system includes the network of airways that allows for gas exchange. The respiratory system takes in oxygen and expels carbon dioxide. The skeletal system consists of bones, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments. The skeletal system works as a supportive structure for your body. It gives the body its shape, allows for movement, makes blood cells, provides protection, and stores minerals. The muscular system is composed of specialized cells called muscle fibers. Muscle fibers contract to allow for movement. The muscular system includes the cardiac muscles that powers the muscular contraction of the heart. It also includes the smooth muscle that enables substances to be moved through the body. Skeletal muscle attaches to bones, allowing for purposeful movements that are under conscious control. The immune system defends the body against physical injury and protects us from pathogens that may cause harm. The immune system includes a variety of defenses against bacteria, viruses, fungal infections, and parasites. The lymphatic system is composed of a network of lymphatic vessels that carry a clear fluid called lymph. The white blood cells of the immune system can travel through the lymph and through the blood, protecting us from infection that can cause illness and disease. The lymphatic system also functions to drain excess fluids and proteins from the tissues all around the body and then returns them back into the bloodstream. The endocrine system influences the functions of the body by using hormones. Glands from the endocrine system secrete hormones that regulate many processes such as growth, metabolism, and reproduction. The endocrine system works together with the nervous system to maintain homeostasis. The reproductive system allows us to make offspring. It functions to produce egg and sperm cells, to transport and sustain these cells, and to nurture developing offspring. The urinary or renal system produces, stores, and eliminates urine Urine is a fluid that is excreted by the kidneys. The kidneys make urine by filtering wastes and extra water from the blood. All of these anatomical layers increase in their complexity. All of the organ systems come together to create the total organism. This brings us to the organism level of our anatomical organization. It takes all of these levels of organization to create a really awesome you. You are multifaceted, elegant, and complex. Now, aren't you amazing?